Welcome to this week's EMBN show. I hope you're good whatever part of the world you're in during these challenging times. Uh, today I'm joined by Chris and we're going to be looking at what makes a long range e mountain bike, as well as a ton of detail of what you guys have been up to. Yeah, welcome to the show. I'm coming at you live from the back of my makeshift studio in the back of my camper, and Steve is live from his back garden in Wales. <laughs> So what's been happening around the world over the past week? Well, it seems that the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, has been out on his e-bike, getting the message across to the world that it's important to stay safe at these times. Uh, and also, he's been exercising his ponies on his e-bike. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Looks pretty funny, but I've also seen Aaron Gwynn getting in some trail time on his taser, doing a few runs, getting a bit of clear sort of mental headspace this time of year. I think it's important for those guys, especially that big loss of racing that's going on at the minute. Yeah, it's, it's really important to uh, make sure you don't suffer from too much cabin fever. Uh, one great edit I saw this last week is actually from being from trials rider Chris Ackrig, who set up a trials course uh, in his garden. Chris, what have you been up to? Well, I've actually taken a bit of inspiration from that trials piece, Steve. I've actually dusted off my 20 inch trials bike and my 24 inch, doing a bit of hopping around in the garden. Got my little boys involved as well, set them up like a mini ramp course as well. So we've been having a bit of fun in the garden, but I have been getting out, hitting, you know, just our rides cross country style, bit of fitness, nothing too sketchy, just keeping the muscles moving and getting out there. How about you? Well, uh, I've actually been watching my neighbour who's a colonel in the army and he recommends that all these indoor exercises, he says, well, just get outside and do those exercises in the garden, get a bit of vitamin D inside you. Uh, but obviously the rules of what sort of exercise you can get up to depends what part of the world you're in. But I can highly recommend if you are one of these fortunate people that can get out and about, now is the time to do a hashtag eco ride, hashtag eco climb. Hashtag eco ride for sure. That's what it's all about this time of year. Um, but I see the roadies haven't been doing a massive bit, you know, big shift. They've been uh, sort of hitting the indoor training pretty hard. But I don't know, it doesn't look much fun to me hitting those rollers and Zwift. It's all about being outdoors, I think. I think so. I mean, I don't really get it myself. I think it's good to uh, just do some sort of general uh, all round body exercises in the garden. Uh, one of the best things I've seen actually when it comes to indoor trainers and stuff like that is our colleagues over on GCN, Tom Last and James Morrell, actually making their own homemade roller kit using rolling pins and some, last, some, or some rubber bands and a bit of 3B2. Did you see that, Chris? I did see it, it looks quite a lot of fun. I see there's a few other videos, kind of Flintstone style of those guys making rollers out of logs and things. Looks a bit more your kind of style, Steve. <laughs> But another news, yeah, I saw um, Chris Hoy. He's been designing e-bikes. Now, I saw this on the Johnny Walker show on BBC. I thought he wasn't into them, but maybe he is now. Yeah, I, I listened to that, actually. So Chris Hoy uh, totally was, was against e-bikes only a few years ago. He thought he was cheating and all that. But yeah, a really interesting uh, conversation on the BBC Johnny Walker show. So yeah, uh, check it out. Uh, so coming up on the show, like I said, we're going to be now talking about what makes a long-range e-mounted bike. But first of all, a bit of uh, bike chat and tech. Now recently, Lapierre launched their new Overvolt GLP2 team bikes. Now this is a bike that uh, we visited with Nico Vouliers in the south of France last year, but it's now become full production. Now Lapierre's aim with this bike was actually to make one of the best handling bikes out there. And it's full of some really nice detail. It's full carbon, a 500 watt hour uh, battery, which is centrally located to keep uh, the weight down in the frame and also a fourth generation Bosch motor. But what I really like about this bike is that the frame actually gets stiffer with an increase in uh, frame size. So four sizes from small to extra large. Uh, Chris, do you get any idea what GLP stands for? Mm. Isn't it Gravity Logic Project? I mean, they've got that battery nice centrally located to keep that weight nice and balanced down low. They're also supplying that bike with a spare 300 watt hour battery. I mean, you can stick your, that battery in your backpack for some of those bigger rides. Do you know, I actually heard that it comes with a backpack as well uh, with that bike. And so it should too, look, look, looking at the price of the bike now, for the team version, uh, 8,499 euros. Now it's 160 mil travel, 21.3 kilograms. Uh, but it's got some really nice detail on it. Uh, I'm looking at the plastic clip there to prevent the spoke magnet from twisting or getting lost. Now we all know about that, Chris, don't we? <laughs> 
<laughs> we do. <laughs> I definitely know about that one. Yeah, uh, an Eagle SRAM Eagle Axis derailleur on the rear, uh, but it's actually got a heavier NX cassette, so um, that's quite interesting. Uh, SRAM G2 RSC brakes with 220 mil rotor up front and 200 mil on the rear. Now the bike is a is a mix. It's a 29 inch up front with a 2.5 Maxxis Asagai. It's actually got a 27.5 rear with a 2.8 Maxxis Minion. Now, uh, Chris, talk us through the Elite version of the bike. It's a little bit cheaper, right? Yeah, so the Elite version, that's coming at 2,500 euros less. It's got mechanical gears on there. You're not getting the SRAM access wireless dropper, uh, wireless uh, derailleur on this one. It's got the dropper seat post. Uh, it's got that entry level uh, Eagle cassette on there as well, but it's only a few grams heavier. So I don't think it's you're missing out on the massive amount with that bike. Seems like the bike to get to me. What do you think? It does look uh, good. So now time to have a look at what you've been up to over the last few weeks. Well, an incredibly important part of the show is the out and about, or out and about. What have you guys been up to over the past week? Um, oh, crikey, actually, I actually forgot, Chris. How is your finger? Well, my finger, Steve, thanks for asking, is getting a load better. Obviously, you saw that crash out of Malaga, but it is pretty deep still, and I'm still suffering a bit from the nerve sort of damage from the end. But when I first did it, it was kind of like wearing a, a thimble. It was rock hard on the end. You could tap it with no feeling, but the feeling's getting back, you know, coming back. It does hurt if I kind of flick it. I was changing a tyre the other day and the tyre lever flicked off and cracked it, but that was pretty painful. But riding wise, pretty much back on it. Oh, sorry, what was that? Uh, oh, beautiful day, isn't it? Beautiful day. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm glad you're back. Uh, now, out and about this week, we're starting off with David, who's on his Orbea Wild FS Air model MYO Custom up in Drum Drumlanrig in Scotland. No, nice shot, I like that. It's propped up against the tractor, no uh, fear of that one falling over, but yeah, nice shot. Yeah. Uh, now, Mark, there's a couple of shots here. Now, Mark is on his Common Cell Metapower 29 Team Edition up in Buttermere. Um, a hard, hard, never-ending winter ride up and down Scarth Gap Pass. Now, I actually uh, know that pass pretty well, uh, Mark. We went there with Adam Brayton last year. Uh, yeah, it's been a long old winter, Chris, hasn't it? It has been pretty harsh, hasn't it? I can sympathise with you, the uh, state of your bike and those conditions. It doesn't look very inviting at the minute, does it, at all? Yeah. Uh, Dan on his Scott E. Genius 720 in Israel. Uh, the, the, obviously the perfect place to end winter out on the, I think that's the Sugar Trail. Uh, and finally, uh, Jonas, uh, 2020 Levo base model in Smoke Bluff, Squamish, uh, Canada. Taking on the slabs and sunset on my third lap, third lap on Smoke Bluffs. I really like that shot, beautiful. Yeah, it's a cool shot, isn't it? It looks like there's loads of grip on those slabs. I bet there's some insane climbs up there. Get, better get over there, Jones, I reckon. Yeah, uh, so guys, great to see that some of you are still fortunate enough to get out and about. Uh, so please keep sending your photographs in, uh, your landscapes of the places you've been riding, your e-man bikes. Well, daylight saving has just come upon us here in the United Kingdom. And I guess in most places in the Northern Hemisphere, we are now getting longer nights, but my colleague Brandon Begg says we're actually getting shorter nights. But what I mean is we're getting more light in the nights. So obviously more light means more riding and possibly you might be looking at getting some uh, longer range battery on your e-bike. Now I know that Chris did a monster ride last year on his Canyon with a 500 watt hour battery, but I do know, Chris, that you actually had your motor off for certain periods of that, that trip, right? Yeah, I rid it. The uh, longest sort of ride I've done on 500 watt hours was 100 kilometers, actually. But that was a super hard ride, five and a half thousand feet of climbing. But as you mentioned, on the easier parts of that, I did actually switch the motor off, but I rode in eco the whole way. And for me, a ride of that sort of distance, it kind of negates the use of an e bike. I think it would probably have been a lot easier and maybe a bit more fun on a standard bike you know i like to turn up the power and use the e-bike to its advantage a kind of holding back isn't what it's about for me uh, now we recently did a piece on uh, do range finders work or, on some uh, websites uh, it's actually quite interesting how accurate they can be uh, but obviously range can vary depending on the conditions like I mentioned. Now on my Specialized Levo with a 700 watt hour, I can get anything from five and a half thousand feet to maybe 3,000 feet of climbing in really horrible, nasty uh, winter conditions. I think this is the whole thing about 
big volume batteries. It actually depends on you, the rider, and all those other variables. Plus, if you think about the, uh, the Specialized SL, it's actually a 320 watt hour, but because it's got only uh, 30 newton meters of torque compared to the 90 newton meters on the Levo, that means it's actually taking less, dra less draw out of that battery. So, you know, we talk about bat long range batteries. It really, really is uh, dependent on you and your type of bike and the type of riding and, and all these different conditions. Uh, let's have a look then at some of the bigger uh, battery bikes on the market. Now, um, now, obviously, what the Rotefield, this German brand Rotefield, now they do a really neat bike with a 750 watt hour battery. We saw this bike at the Rock de Vizur Festival and also Eurobike last year, but they're not alone, Chris, are they? No, I think High Bike are pretty, you know, smashing it with this one. They got a 625 watt hour internal battery with an optional 500 watt hour extender on it. That means 1125 watt hours of power. So that's big, big days out. Yeah, I mean, I actually, so did you see uh, the footage of Piers and the High Bike guys over in Corsica recently? Uh, I think they were seeing how far they could get on an 1125 watt hour bike. And I can tell you what, that's a seriously, seriously big day out. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the Specialized Levo SL has a 320 watt hour uh, internal battery, but you've got the option of some range extenders, which are 160 watt hour. So if you think about it, you can maybe just keep, in, keep those range extenders in your bag. And the same goes for any type of battery. You know, the range really is, the sky is the limit. You can, you can carry two 500 watt hours or two 625 watt hours in your backpack and go for some monster days out. Um, uh, but yeah, Chris, that Lapierre GLP, which we talked about, what would you say the extra battery was on that bike? So the Lapierre, GL Lapierre GLP has an extra 300 watt hours on it. So that's going to make it up to 800 watt hours, you know, that plug-in extender, meaning again, a big day out. But I think the big daddy of them all, Steve, which is that one? Uh, yeah, well, it's obviously the M1 Spitzing, which has got, I think, over a thousand watt hours. Uh, but I want to go back to what I talked about, about chucking a battery in your bag because we rode those great bikes uh, last year and they've got a really compact 700 watt hour battery right so you could probably fit two or three in those in the rucksack quite easily yeah and they come out so fast as well literally a flick of a switch and those batteries are out i think they're a lot smaller than some of the other batteries out there so sticking a few of them in your backpack could be massive range uh, and one final uh, uh discussion point on long range is thomas have come out with the light rider e2 with, with with a battery which is over 700 watt hours so uh yes obviously these these bigger range bikes are certainly coming on the market right chris yeah, I'm really excited to see these big, you know, big range batteries coming out. I think that's one thing that is holding back, especially those earlier bikes, is those smaller batteries. So I think as we head into the future, those big, big batteries are going to make a big, big difference. Well, it's going to make a big, big difference for the big, big riders, right? <laughs> uh, guys, let us know uh, what battery you've got in your bike. Do you think that uh, long range batteries, bigger volume batteries actually matter? Let us know in the comments down below. Now, some of the videos you're gonna be seeing on EMBN in the few weeks ahead of us are ones that we've pre-recorded. So uh, just bear in mind that we're not taking any unnecessary risks. Uh, and uh, be prepared to see some more videos from my garden and Chris's camper van and bedroom or whatever place he decides to uh, uh, record them from. Now, coming up on the channel this week, we've got a track stand challenge or track stand progression. Uh, which is maybe a bit of a more of a humorous look at the track stand. And then on Sunday, uh, Chris takes on Tom Cardi in a game of bike. Uh, Chris, what's, what's involved in that exactly? As you know, Tom Cardi is a pretty crazy guy on a bike, especially on a hardtail. He's probably one of our best kind of street riders, but he's recently switched to riding e-bikes. He's got a lot of crazy flatland tricks, which kind of took me a bit out of my limits, to be fair. It was a pretty crazy day out, but definitely a good one. Uh, Chris, I'm interested to see uh, his signature move, which, which you guys did together, right? Yeah, he did unleash it, but unfortunately my old man ankles couldn't hack it, but he did it with ease, but there's loads of new cool tricks, some stuff I've literally never ever done on a bike. So it was a, it was a fun day out, loads of crashes and loads of fun. Cool, so that's coming up on the channel on Sunday. Don't forget to tune in.
Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you haven't seen the dam video on EMBN, don't forget to tune in. Uh, we've actually had quite, had quite a lot of comments, a lot of uh, involvement uh, in this feature. Uh, Chris, uh, Sam Pilgrim's put a comment in there saying, sick, he didn't think that was possible, to be honest. Nice one. Now, I understand that you've ridden the dam downwards with Sam Pilgrim before, right? Yeah, it actually come onto my radar. I think we rode it two or three years ago, um, and it was pretty scary then, actually, just going down it. But I, you know, it's always been in the back of my mind, and I think you mentioned it a while ago about riding up it. And obviously, whilst we were in Malaga, is you know, hit it up and got it done. Yeah, uh, Lee Jocelyn says, "Well done, absolutely mental." And you can, you actually looked terrified before you did the first run. You did look a little bit, you did look a bit slabbish, I have to say, in in the approach run. Well, it was it was pretty scary actually, because as you know, it happened a couple of days after that big crash, and I was like, well, what happens if it goes upside down at the top of that thing, and the bike comes down on top of me? It's not going to be losing, you know, smashing the end of my finger. It's going to be probably my bike going to be written off, and I'm going to just going to be on a, a massive death slide, probably down into Malaga. Uh, now, Julian Shepherd says, uh, I think you should think about doing any further. Does this stop when you seriously damage yourself? I'm impressed but concerned. Well, I think with all this like crazy stuff you see, like both me and Steve do, and we Speak have obviously been riding for quite <laughs> been riding for quite a few years ourselves, and we know what risks are involved, and we certainly wouldn't be pushing stuff outside of our limits. You know, sometimes it might be to the edge of the limits, but we certainly wouldn't go above them. So it's def definitely never going to be out of control. Always yeah. within, you know, controlled limits. Yeah, uh, you know, I think we proved when we were doing our eco versus turbo challenge that things can happen even on small uh, bits of rock outcrop, right? Yeah, definitely. That one, you know, just a small little crash like that put an end to the day and pretty big injury. You know, if you're out by yourself and you're losing blood through the end of your finger. And as you know, I pretty much passed out after that, feeling pretty faint, pretty giddy. You know, it could have been a lot of different story if you guys weren't there with a the first aid kit and the whiskey on board. Right, it's bike vault time, and the great news is we're going to have some more uh, bike vault images over the forthcoming weeks. Uh, and I'm starting today off with Nikki, who's on a specialised Levo hardtail in a very hard place, the Hard Knock Pass uh, in the Lake District of the UK. Uh, yes, definitely not for the faint hearted that one. I think that is a super nice. Nice. Next up is Adrian with his Giant Stance E2019 model, and he's up in Aberystwyth in Wales. That's got to be a nice shot. Look at that. Amazing. That's nice. Uh, and somewhere uh, which is obviously a mountain bike, an E mountain bike paradise, is Sedona, Arizona. Now, this is from JRS G62 with his 2019 high bike S Dero. Now, that, there's only one way this is going, and that's got to be super nice. Uh... Nice, super nice that shot. This one's in from Lee. He's on his 2020 Cube Stereo Hybrid 160. He's up in the Brecon Beacons. Look at that shot as well. That has got to be a super nice. Uh, Puerto Rico, uh, this is uh, a location called Dorado. It's Antonio on his 2019 Specialized Turbo Levo. Wow, you gotta love a bit of Puerto Rican action. Chris, haven't you? Amazing, super nice. This one's a bit closer to you, Steve. This is on the Smilog Downhill Trails in South Wales. This is Reese with his white E150 RS. That is a nice shot. I'd go super nice on that, actually. Oh, you're too kind. Well, all right, then we'll go super nice. Super nice. I'd go, I'd go super nice on that. Uh, now, back to Daisy Hill Conservation Park uh, is Scott uh, on the Norco VLT2. And I like the look of that, that Norco e-bike, Chris, do you? It does look a sweet bike, that, doesn't it? But what do you think what of the shot? What do you shot? reckon? They're nice. Oh, I think that's you're super giving nice. Super nice. Right, next up is Wayne with his Focus Jam Squared. He's up in Nottinghamshire. That looks a good trail as well. Look at that. It does look. What do you think on that one? It's got to be a nice, right? Nice, nice. Uh, and continuing the Focus theme, uh, Graham's got his uh, Sam Squared 6.7 2019 in Eglinton Country Park. Nice. And we've got Jonathan with his 2019 Specialized Levo Comp. He's up in Castle Rock, overlooking the famous Muzzardon Temple. That's got to be super nice. Uh, Derek with a high bike full 7.7 seven in Fife, Scotland. Uh, yeah, that's super nice, I think. Next up is Connor with his Merida E160. He's up in Winlatter on the pass up there as well. What do you think on that yeah. one, Steve? 
Uh, I reckon that's a nice shot. Uh, we've definitely got like a, a Lakeland and Welsh uh, slant to this week's bike fold as well. But we're gonna close things off with Barry and uh, a Marinda E160 500 2019 in Wellington, New Zealand. Guys, love these shots. Uh, Barry, by the way, that's a super nice. Uh, look, just keep sending your shots in. That's the dog barking in the distance there. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we'll hopefully get you on the bike vault over the forthcoming weeks. So that's it for this week. Uh, please don't forget to keep sending in your images wherever you've been, uh, wherever part of the world. Don't forget to get involved in the comments during these uh, quite challenging times. Uh, and also let us know what you think of Chris's dam feature, plus uh, his game of bike, which is coming up on Sunday. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and find us on social media too. Cheers. Bye.